All right, guys, as you can see here, we've got a Cooler Master HAF full tower case. Um, this is actually my buddy's computer. You can see his little, you know, little stuff he has inside his 550 Ti and everything. Um, he gave it to me, he broke it. Um, not sure how he broke it. All I know is when you turn it on, um, everything comes on, but that's literally all. It doesn't post. You don't get the option to go to BIOS, more than likely, and I know his computer was freezing, so it's probably some sort of update, uh, ended up breaking the board or something like that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be swapping out with this MSI, <coughs> this MSI 970A G46, sorry about that. We're going to be swapping out the motherboards. This is the ASUS M5A97. This is the older model. Now you see that the 2.0, uh, the reversion, the revision or whatever they are, the 2.0, the LE 2.0, EVO 2.0. This is just the the before all that. This is just the M5 A97. Uh, good board. Uh, I have an, I have the actual, I have the AM, a, M5 A97 Evo uh, and I, have, I haven't had any issues with it. It's been awesome. Um, so not sure. It might be the RAM. I don't know. He, he said he swapped everything out but I'm not totally sure how to true that is. So, but whatever. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking out the motherboard, uninstalling the processor, uh, obviously swapping the GPU. We actually got some new RAM. Uh, like I said, I didn't bring that in here. We got some new RAM to swap out to see if maybe it was RAM because he said he didn't test it before. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started on this. Now, again, I'm filming this by myself, so bear with me while I try and do everything and install it. Um, so, let's take a closer look at the board itself, or the, uh, the insides, I guess. See what we can do in that. All right. So first things first. Obviously, when you're dealing with boards and stuff like this, make sure you're not you're off carpet. Uh, you want to be on like tile or something that can't build up new static electricity. And if you are, uh, a lot of people like touching the case, you know, to discharge any uh, static electricity they have in their hands. Um, you know, most boards nowadays are pretty good about it, but you know, just to just to be safe. Let's see if I can get a light to turn on. No, no light. Okay, well, all right. So obviously you got your graphics card right here, right below it. You've got your power supply, which this happens to be a Corsair TX650, uh, 650 watt. Uh, so first things first, let's make sure we go through, we understand everything. As you can notice, everything's a mess. Um, also going to go ahead and rebuild it all too, and we're going to make it all look nice. And we're going to try and give you a brief description of how to build the computer if you have all these parts. Um, so first things first, make sure we start unplugging things. Unplug the GPU and pull the GPU out first. Okay? So you got that also when you're doing this. Make sure you have, you know, just a basic screwdriver set or whatever it is, especially when you're taking off the motherboard and stuff, because everything is screwed in. Now, this particular case, the HAF, it has these little tab things that I guess snap in place. I don't really like it. I like the actual screw that holds it in place. These little plastic things are probably going to break eventually. But hey, not my case, don't really care. For these, for the HAF, you're just going to press in by the side, it pops, pop it back, pop the second one because it, it takes up two slots, pop that one back, obviously you got it. Now remember it's on your PCI Express slot, it's got this little tab right here, go ahead and pop that back so it unlocks your card, and pull it out, here we go. We got it, that's it, you got your EVGA GTX 550. No, it's not AMD or anything great, but hey, it's what he has. It's not mine. It's not a bad board. So just put this somewhere safe. Oops. Don't hit it. <laughs> All right. Now, as you can see, we're left with the motherboard. Got the RAM. RAM is just going to kind of get into the way and don't even know if it's good or not. Just go ahead and pop that out. Just pop the tabs back if you can. Don't know if this one's double. Yes, it is. Some of them, the bottom one, like for instance my Evo, it's locked in place so you kind of slide and you pop it and it just locks um, that you actually can't move it. But just go ahead and pull it out. Obviously you got the Corsair Vengeance. Um, right on the compatibility list, it didn't work, but I figured RAM was RAM. Um, I could be wrong. If you, if you know something different, please tell me. But apparently this board didn't support this version of the Vengeance RAM, um, which is the... CMZ8GX3M2A 1600C9B. It did, however, support the C9, but not the C9B, according to the specifications. I don't know if it's just newer or whatnot. 
Not totally sure, again, I didn't put the board together, so I'm not sure. Just pull them out though, get them out of the way, open yourself up a little bit. Luckily he doesn't have liquid cooling or anything like that, so it's not too extravagant. It's just your basic little uh, stock heat sink and fan. So just put these somewhere safe as well. Back here. All right, now you got your SATA ports coming in, you got your uh, front case, power, lights, all that stuff. You got your audio down here. Just go ahead and unplug that stuff. So like I said, we're going to be taking it all out. All right, you got your speaker. Put that somewhere safe. I like it. I like knowing that my computer posted right. Get that off. Go ahead and take your SATA cables off. Okay. Alright, looks like it's missing a screw actually. Yep, it is. Alright, take off your 24 volt. Put that down there. Take out your, this one uses an 8 pin CPU power. Put that somewhere else. Now, as you can see on this board, also it has all these routing ports. You can route the power supply all back through there and not have this mess. Like I said, when we go and install it, I'll show you all how to do that and get it looking good. These are all your case fans. You got your CPU fan. You got your two case fans. There's a giant fan up here. What is it? 240 millimeter, whatever it is. We got 140 back here. You got all that stuff. Just unplug it. There's one. There's two. There is. Get it off. That was on there. Good. Three. Okay. Pop that back there so it's on our way. Same thing with this guy. Just put it back there. It should have been there in the first place. Put that back there. All right. Now you're left with the board. And what you're going to do is this is just your normal ATX, not micro ATX, anything like that. So you got two pin, two screws right here, two pins, two screws right here, two screws on the bottom. What you're going to do is you're going to take your screwdriver set. Screwdriver set. Take a Phillips head. Go ahead and start taking those screws off. Be sure not to lose them because they don't come with the motherboard, they come with the case. That one's free spinning. I'm hoping that the standoffs are in the right place. Like I said, I didn't build this computer. I would drop it, luckily. This magical case has vents on the bottom, it popped out the bottom. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and set it down. Bear with me for a second. So I set the case down on this side so it would be a little, a little easier to pull everything out. And that way we're also not fighting with gravity when pulling this board out and everything like that. Okay? So I just got to go ahead and finish on taking off the screws. Now, being careful of this back plate right there, you don't damage anything. Just go ahead and pull the board right out. All right, 
So you got the board out, like I said. This is the ASUS M5A97. Um, you got your FX series, this is the AM3 Plus board. Um, very good board. I've never had any issues with it. I think he might have bricked it by accident. We'll see what we can do with this, but as you can see, we got our MSI board over there that we're going to be reinstalling, which we're going to have to swap out the CPU and everything like that. So let's move this over here. Again, handling boards and stuff, make sure you're not on carpeted area, you don't want to damage anything or anything like that. Okay, so as you can see, we got the board over here now. This is the this was the ASUS that was actually in the case. We got the board over here now. Okay, what we're going to be doing, like I said, is we're going to be swapping it to that MSI board over there. In order to do that, though, we got to take the CPU off. We got to actually, sorry, take the heat sink off. Then we got to get to the CPU, move it over, transfer everything like that, reapply heat sink, and uh, all that good stuff. All right, now. For the heat sink, this is like I said, this is just a stock one, so it requires no modification of the original mounts or anything like that. It's very simple to take on and off. Um, I might include a picture of my heat sink, which takes forever to install. It's the Cooler Master 212 something Aeronata, and it's a it's a pain in the butt to take off. These I'm actually very surprised. This is a this board was running the uh, FX6100 series, which is the six core, and it actually ran maybe under load. It was maybe it hit like 39 degrees Celsius. That's what the stock heat, heat sink can fan. So just imagine what liquid cooling or an aftermarket heat sink would be. It's actually a very, very good heat sink and fan. What you're going to do for this is just pop this up. For starters, that might have been an issue. It wasn't locked in place. <laughs> like I said, I didn't install this, so not quite sure, but always make sure this tab is pulled and it's locked in place properly in order to get the proper uh, heat. If it's obviously on for a long time, it's going to freeze. Uh, just saying. Uh, and the heat sink was not locked in place. So just pull that off. Now it's going to be a little sticky because of the, the thermal place that was applied. Let's see if there's even thermal paste on this one. Like I said, none of this is mine. This is a buddy's of mine. I'm repairing it for him. So, it's kind of all, all a little shocking. Pull it off. Okay. As you can see, he did have the thermal paste on there, protecting it from there. Um, see the residue? Let me zoom in on that. That's your processor right there. You can see as it's getting close, you get your processor right there. You can see you got your heat sink where it meets right there. You apply your thermal paste. So, what we're going to have to do it now. We actually have to take this chipset off now, AMD. All processors are very, very easy. Um, I'll show you, but they, I mean, when you put them back in, they need, be, they need to be in the right place, but they're very, very easy to put in. Just take the little uh, little bar right here, pull it out a little bit, just a little, and pop it up. You can hear a little pop. It unlocks those pins. You just pull it out. That's all you got to do. No, uh, no jokes there, please. Looks okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. This is the AMD FX 6100. All right. Obviously, put this somewhere safe. This is your processor. This is your brain. Um, again, we got to get that off to put it back in the new one. But get our board right here. Got our processor right here. Good to go to start swapping. Set this over here for a second. So what we're gonna do actually is because he handed me a second one. Give me here. Give me one second to take a short break, and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Now, as you can see, this is still the processor that I just pulled out of this board. This is actually another processor that he handed me out of his pocket. So we're going to see if this works or not, because he handed it literally to me like this, and he pulled it out of his pocket. Um, I cleaned the thermal paste off of this one already last night, um, so it's already clean. We can reapply it and test it. Um, we'll see if it works. I'm going to put it in this board, see if it even turns on. Uh, we'll see. Now, this is the one I just pulled out. As you can see, it's still got thermal paste on here. What I did go ahead and grab was I grabbed some 91% ISO, whatever you want to call it, alcohol, put it in this, and just take your Q-tips, just dab it in there. Found alcohol works the best. It also, it's not like water. It dries, it, or I'm sorry, it evapor evaporates very quickly. Um, and it's, it's it, it, you use it on electronics all the time, clean boards to make sure they're all good. Now, like I said, dip the Q-tip in there, and all you're going to do is you're going to Rub it, and as you, as you can see, the alcohol, it cleans it off, gets that junk off there. All right, now you're going to have to do this a couple times. Just make sure you get it all. Got all the gunk on. 
It's actually the same thing if you're going to be doing a uh, Xbox Red Ring fix. Same thing. You find that CPU and GPU uh, chipsets in the board itself. Generally, most of the time, the red ring of death is caused by that thermal paste. They use crappy thermal paste when they put it together, and it just over time wears down and deteriorates. And that red ring is actually the computer either, either uh, it either overheats or it senses that it doesn't have that that heat sink there. All right, all nice and clean and shiny. What you see on there is just kind of a smear from the stuff, but it's it's all clean. It's good. See on there if it focuses. There you go. Got your AMD FX right up there at the top. Got your 6100. This is the six core version. It's a good chipset. Like I said, we got two of them. This is the one I just pulled out. I know this one's working. Uh, we're going to set this one to the side. Okay, and what we're going to do is now this board doesn't work. Um, so we're just going to set this to the side. Hopefully, uh, Asus will, will allow us to arm A it because I don't think he has, has had it too long um, but we'll, we'll see so let's just take this, set it to the side right now we got this a MSI nice board right here alright nice nice board should have nothing on it All right. Now, generally when you get a brand new processor, this is essentially, I mean, essentially we're, we're building a computer right here, we're rebuilding it. Um, generally, when you first get a processor, it's got a film on it, or the, the heat sink has a film, make sure you always pull it off or it'll melt to it. All right. Now, like I said, this is the, this is the uh, I don't know processor that it either works or doesn't work. You know, we'll, we'll see here. Oops, hit the camera. Okay, now, when you're looking at this, as you can see in this corner right here, if it refocuses, give it a second. No, it's not going to focus. Okay, but as you can see right here, you got a little marker on the processor. It's nowhere else, it's just that little mark right there. That's your arrow for you, telling you where to put it. There we go. Okay. And, like I said, if you're not sure, which I wasn't, you can take your manual. It always has a breakdown in here. So let's look at it and make sure we're installing it in the right place. All right, now it gives you a little diagram, all right? You can see you got your molding right there, two molds, you got your processor. Which tells you the arrow on your board right there, you can see, points there, points to the upper left hand corner, which is where we have it up here. And then clamp it down, reapply the heat sink. Good to go. Manual. Good thing. Right. Which you, now, once you have it in the pins and you have, actually have it in spot, take that board down, put it down like that, and press it. It locks the, locks the CPU in place. Next thing we're going to do to get it prepped is you got to have some sort of thermal paste. Now, i got a little bag of, of goodies. If you actually look at my previous links, there's actually the XBR Depot repair kit that actually comes with Arctic Silver, which is your thermal paste. Now, um, that most of the times, it'll come with you know some sort of little packet or whatever you want to use um, for your heat sink or whatever like for instance what I got with my AMD board or I'm sorry with my Cooler Master uh, heat sink fan it came with a little thing of ther thermal paste I like using Arctic Silver Arctic Silver 5 very good stuff very good stuff am I going to use it on this? no <laughs> not I'm going to use the Cooler Master it's still good I got an older thermal paste so it's kind of expensive. Sometimes you'll even get this little nasty goo that you have to mix up in your fingers. It's uh, no, nah, don't want to do that. Okay, now take your thermal paste. Okay, now what you want to want to want to get is pretty much just a uh, a pea size on the board, right? So let's see if we can zoom in here. Right, take it. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a, uh, a business card or anything like it. So, give me one second to find a business card real quick. All right, sorry about that. All right, I found a business card. <laughs> no, uh, nothing to Best Buy, but just going to use that and just happen to have it on me. All right now, you got your thermal paste on there. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to evenly space it across the chip. 
to make sure you know there's no big gaps or anything because remember this is what you know is in between the GPU and the CPU, GPU, the CPU and the heatsink, and you're gonna want to make sure it's evenly applied. You know, there's no large gaps or anything like that. So just take your card and just. It's nice and evenly applied. As you can see, we got a nice even coat. Get in on that. Get a nice even coat. Thermal paste over it. Just set this aside. It is messy. That crap gets everywhere. Just be careful with it. Now, like I said, this is actually this is actually the other CPU. This is actually the test CPU. We're going to put it in. I'm pretty sure it works fine. Um, but we'll we'll see here. So put that on there. Now, what you want to do is you take your heat sink. Now we've already got that applied. Right now, if you if you want to, you can apply a little bit on here. I'll go ahead and just apply just a go ahead and apply just a little bit on here, just to give it a little coat. All right, got a nice even coat on there and there. Probably overdid it with the thermal paste. Um, like I said, that crap gets everywhere on my fingers and everything. Um, so got that and that. All right, now you can take this. Make sure this is up top. Well. I guess it works either way, but I put it up top, just the top part of the motherboard. Zoom out, make sure we got this all. Ready to take it, you got your case. This is the fan power cord. Okay, take it, and it fits down right in place because this is not an aftermarket, like I said. All right, it's down on there. Oop. A little off. A little off center. Okay. Here we go. Take that, lock that part in place. Take the top one. Uh, push it on top. Let me get in on there real quick. As you can see right here, it kind of it locks down in place like that. All right, as you can see, now what you're going to do is you're going to take this guy right here, this bar, and pull it. There you go. Now your heat sink is locked in place. Pull the bar to the other side. Your heat sink and CPU are locked in place right there and they're not going anywhere. Like I said, I found the board. The heat sink was not locked in place. That might have been the main issue, um, but we'll see. All right. Now, for this, which I don't ever recommend doing, all right, but because this is not the actual CPU and I don't technically have a test rig, what I'm going to do here is we're going to actually test right here. Again, not on anything metal. Make sure you don't got anything metal here, all right. Setting this like this, I'm actually going to be testing it just to see if it if it works. Okay. Now I don't ever recommend doing this, like I said. This is just for this is for test purposes. Okay. Take this. Find on your thing right here. Luckily, it says CPU fan right up here at the top. See that? I'll show you. This zooms in. Right underneath it, you can see CPU fan. So that's where I'm going to plug the CPU fan into. Because remember, on most new boards nowadays, especially with the UEFI, bio, UEFI BIOS, they have um, built-in uh, fan controllers, which are very, very helpful. And not only speed-wise, um, telling you RPMs and stuff like that, that you can control everything. So, like I said, we got that on there now. Okay. Got the heat sink on there. Now, next thing we're gonna put is the RAM. Like I said, we're testing it out of the, the motherboard for now. When we go to install it, it's gonna be completely different. Okay. Got uh, Kingston HyperX motherboard to put in here. He had Vengeance, but he never swapped it out, so we're not sure if it was the the uh, RAM was bad or what. So, got. Two four gigabyte sticks of the HyperX. Very good RAM. I have 16 in my system and never had any issues. Now, I know with this particular case, or with this particular uh, motherboard, which ones to put your your uh, your RAM into, sorry, your slot, because remember, you got your dual channel slots. Okay, you got your black and your blue. Okay, now each one, they may be different. 
But if you're not sure, again, manual, take your manual, go obviously to English, find your RAM where it's dual channel mode population rule, right? It'll obviously tell you if you're using one channel, you use DIM2 and use DIM4. Obviously, you use, you're, if you're using all the slots, you fill them all up. So two and four would be blue and blue. Because if you look, oh, never mind. Mine actually has a little little thing that number. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. Right here off to the side, yeah. It says DIM1, DIM2, I'll show you. And it tells you the order of it. You can see that right there. Let's get it the right way. You can see DIM1, DIM2, DIM3, DIM4. So you get DIM1, 2, 3, 4. Very simple. So you use the blues on this particular board. Like I said, this is the AM. This uh, sorry, this is the MSI 970A G46. So take your one stick. Oops, sorry. Again, trying to do all this and film. Take your one stick. Just put it in place like that. Now most of these auto lock. So you just there you go. That one's in. Take your other stick, put it in the slots, make sure it's open. And push it in. There you go. Now your RAM's on. Take this like this. Okay. Now again, this is just for testing purposes. All right, sorry about that. My camera only has a 20 minute record time and apparently my camera overheated on itself. Um, okay, what I went ahead and did was I moved my case out of the way because we're gonna be testing it like this. So I pulled the 20, your main 24 volt uh, part out. I pulled the PCIe slot out for the card, pulled the CPU for right there. Now, what we're gonna be doing next is Carefully, like I said, because so I never recommend this, especially if you don't have a um, actual test kit itself. Just be very careful when you're doing this. And I'm only doing it to test that CPU. All right, now I'm going to put this in the slot right here, which is not going to fit right there. Here we go. All right, now it's locked in place. Again, being very careful. Okay. Now. You go ahead and move the camera over here. Okay, so you got the got our NVIDIA GTX 550 installed. You got the RAM installed. You got all that installed. You got everything you need to turn the computer on. Okay. Now, now again, the zoom out. Case is not plugged in. Okay, the, I'm sorry, the power supply, because I'm just using the power supply from the case, which is I know is good. All right, so it's not plugged in yet. So take this, plug it in right here. Make sure it plugs in. Okay. Take your 8-pin, all depending on the board. This one, again, uses an 8-pin. All right, got that. Got my PCIe for the graphics card. Carefully put that one on there because it's just hanging there. All right, now everything for the motherboard is hooked up. Okay, now as you can see, got a monitor right here that I'm using to just see if it posts. Because if it posts, that CPU is good. It will not post otherwise. Now, plugging this into one of the slots, all right? Obviously for this board, it's DVI, it's a VGA cable. My monitor only supports VGA, so I'm using an adapter. Plugging it in very carefully. Okay. Now it's all, everything is all plugged in. Now obviously, like I said, being very careful here, okay? Make sure nothing metal there, Nothing will short out this board. Nothing worse is that, shorting the board out when you're trying to fix it. Okay. 
Now, again, very carefully, plugging in the power supply for the case. Okay. Still currently off. Now, what I'm going to have to do, because I did not hook up the switches, because it's not in the case, very carefully, I'm going to have to short it on the power, which should be right here, which is these two right here. Okay. I'm going to have to very carefully short those out on each other to turn on the CPU manually. Okay. Because that's all the switch is, is your joint of two things. So let's see if it works. Turn power on. See, my Asus right now would have some lights on it. All right, that's that. And now, very carefully. Well, manual time. <laughs> Standby. Okay, sorry about that. Yes, uh, luckily there is a manual, and I was. I was actually, there was, it was reserved, so there was actually nothing on it. So now I'm going to hit the power. Helps if your power supply is on. Power supply on. I can hear. And if you can see, it is on. Now if you look at this, the MSI board, those lights, oops, sorry about that. Let me do this right here. Those lights on this MSI board, those are the CPU phases. If the first one's lit up, it's phase one, second, phase two, third, phase three, fourth. Okay. As you can see, it got right here to CPU or memory changed. Please enter setup to configure your system. Let me go grab a keyboard real quick. Okay. I installed the keyboard. Now I'm going to reboot it. Aha! Actually, now it's turning on. All right. All right, guys. A um, few things that I just negligently forgot. Um, one thing, the reason why that weird error I was getting was coming on screen was because I forgot to plug in a hard drive. Everything else was, uh, it's either, either, <coughs> oh, man, if I can stop messing things up. It, um, it was either be due to the fact that the drivers aren't installed or whatever, um, or it's just my old monitor. This is just, this is my main monitor. This is, like I said, just have one I have for spares for testing and stuff like that. Um, it might have been because of the fact of the drivers not being there. This, it wasn't coming on immediately. It was taking a few seconds. I don't know if you've ever used old monitors before. It takes a little bit for them to turn on for a second. So it was kind of skipping over that press delete for um, BIOS. So holding delete, it came to this. Letting it go, it asked for me to insert uh, boot media. So everything's, everything's good on here. As you can see, you got the what they call the click BIOS. All right? You got all your stats on there. As you can see at the top right, you got your, you know, it's reading, it's got your AMD FX 6100 six core processor, which is the one that is in there. And this is the original one that he gave me, so the new one's also sitting right there. So both his, both his processors do work. And they're both, they're both 6100s. So, you know, you got your memory size, you got eight gigs in there, so it's coming up. You got your temperature, and your motherboard system, 30. CPU and now you gotta remember it's a six core. It's also running on the stock heat sink. In idle it's 3738. Okay, you know, not 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 too horrible. Re what's really bad is when your motherboard, or I'm sorry, when, when the temperatures are getting up to the 80s. That's that's when you really want to uh, to worry about that. Because right there, I mean, that's, that's a fever for us, you know. So this is the Click BIOS. You got your uh, 
I guess it's got your quick, it's got a quick start right there. It's got some utilities. It's a little different than the Asus ones, and they really mess around with this too much. It's got your overclocking. It's got your uh, energy saving efficient thing right underneath it too, right here. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Next thing we're going to go to into is hooking everything back up into the case.